sometimes when something goes really, really bad in a video game, a player does something called rage quitting. Maybe he throws the remote at the TV or destroys the whole computer, the keyboard, or one of my favorites is ripping the internet connection or router out of the wall, leaving the rest of the players hanging. Recently, it turns out that the President of the United States can rage quit press conferences and councilwomen in Leon Valley can rage quit meetings. Keep watching so you can see what happens when triggered snowflakes can no longer stand to hear the truth. First, though, I need to set the stage. In August, I submitted an ethics complaint against Councilwomen Donna Charles and Catherine Rodriguez. Earlier this year, I submitted an open records request. The city played open records games and wouldn't give me the information. By the way, I finally won that at the Attorney General. Still, the city administrators and officials are being poor sports and refused to give me the information that they were ordered to release. Nevertheless, while researching this, I discovered that the two councilwomen violated the city charter. So I submitted an ethics complaint, just like they did against the mayor. In her response to my complaint, Donna Charles presented some sort of wild conspiracy that somehow the mayor had something to do with my complaint and that I, I guess it's that I wore a change Leon Valley shirt. I don't know. I don't understand how any of them could think that the mayor and I ha have a relationship like that where we're doing things together. Nevertheless, she alleged that she firmly believes that this complaint was filed by two of the mayor's supporters with her participation as ongoing harassment and retaliation since the election of May 4th. 2019. The following is provided as support of my belief. <laughs> oh, my, oh my goodness. I know she watches my YouTube channel. Has she not noticed that I certainly don't give the mayor any slack in my Leon Valley coverage? Okay, so she starts off in May 4th of 2019. She was elected to city council place one position, beating the incumbent and mayor's friend David Edwards by one vote. She then complains that the mayor chose to sit at the seat, the table, where they were recounting the place one ballots. Well, that would make sense since that was the closest election where she won by one vote and the other election, Will Bradshaw and David Jordan Bradshaw, won by 18 votes. So I would think that the close election is the one that should be closely monitored. Then she says that claims that David Edwards filed a fraudulent election lawsuit claiming that two people voted illegally and that they voted for me. She complains that the mayor's husband represented David Edwards. She complains about the 312 hearing against the real Benny Martinez, then talks about the ethics complaint that she submitted against the mayor. And finally, she didn't like that David Edwards submitted a complaint about how they basically published a political advertisement in the city-funded newsletter. I covered that ethics hearing on my other channel, Justin Pulliam Live. This was submitted on August 20th, and then on September 1st, she presented a version of it at the city council meeting. Now, I got a kick out of this since in the August 20th one, she complained about how the mayor read as public comments a version of my complaint that was sent to her by a Leon Valley resident. You can see right here if you want to pause it and read how she complains about that. Yet here she goes reading her response. What does all this have to do with rage quitting anyway? So I, I'm giving the background of what this whole back and forth was during the city council meetings. I requested a copy of these notes that you just saw that Donna Charles read on September 1st. I wanted to know also where all the stuff that was supposedly kept for the record, like my letters, where to find it, what happened to it. I, I later found out that all it's um, for the record documents are kept with the meeting notes in the city secretary's office and eventually in record stores. So they're not included in the minutes or posted online. You have to do an open records request uh, for those documents. 
Um, one thing I've learned is if I want to actually get documents and I do a small request, I carbon copy the mayor. Generally, the city administrators actually give me the documents when I do that. So the city secretary sent both me and the mayor this document, and that was on at the end of September, so about a month ago. And I wanted to have this. I thought the mayor also might like to reference Donna Charles' notes here so she could fight back, set the record straight, instead of just constantly being steamrolled by the intolerant political establishment members who cannot have anything but their own narrative advanced in public. This was another sucker punch delivered by the political establishment against the mayor, much like Savaggio railed against her at two different meetings after the arrest of Olin Yarnell. She complains about the mayor making statements like most of these issues would not come up if Dr. Edwards had not lost by one contested vote back in May 2019. That election contest is due to go to court tomorrow. And she elaborates in this one that the people who Edwards claims that the two people later identified as former counselor and a former citizen's police advisory chair voted illegally. Let that sink in. Not only do you have out-of-town police officers registered to vote at City Hall and voting in Leon Valley, but you have a former counselor and a former citizen's police advisory chair who voted illegally according to this lawsuit. She pointed out that Will Bradshaw was the one who provided David Edwards with the information about the possible illegal votes. By the way, if you want to talk about combating election fraud, Will Bradshaw is on top of it. He's the one who identified that instance of irregularities, and he goes through every day everyone who votes in Leon Valley to try to maintain the integrity of the elections of the city. She complained about the mayor signing an affidavit relating to the ethics complaint against her regarding the lion's roar. And can y'all believe these political-oriented messages that the mayor said? She said, the charter is ruining the city. It limits the roles of the mayors. Oh, this is political since the item is on the upcoming ballot. Uh, she is using her position to put out her views on this measure in the voters' minds. <laughs> it's the kind of inception the political establishment wishes they could do, just planting ideas in our minds. And then she objected to the mayor saying, they may be trying to remove me and Councillor Bradshaw, kicking off counselors. Political since she did not include that she, Councillor Bradshaw, and others are working to remove <laughs> Councillor Alcaster and me both duly elected. The, the establishment seems that they cannot understand the difference between sham hearings to boot out people they don't like and citizen-driven petition referendum initiatives that are done by the residents. Democracy rather than the oligarchy maintaining their small circle of power eliminating any outsiders who may challenge them. The mayor addressed all these accusations at the October 20th city council meeting. You'll never believe the unprofessional outbursts from the councilwoman who doesn't even bother to show up to the meetings in person. I'd like to put forth some food for thought from one of my favorite presidents, Abraham Lincoln. I'm paraphrasing slightly, stand with anybody who stands for right, stand with that person while she is right, and part with her when she goes wrong. Thank you. There were some statements that Ms. Charles had made on 9-1. 2020. That's a long, long time ago, but I feel compelled that I need to respond because every, every, we always have two sides to every story. And so I wanted to just briefly go through some of the points that I would like to counter on her um, statement. Uh, she was uh, saying something about counting ballots at the May 2019 Bear County election. And I was not counting any ballots. I was sitting next to a person who was counting. And I was an observer and a statutorial 
statutorial supervisor. Uh, Ms. Callahan, who's the head of the elections, never said a word to me, and I never, no one else did, and the recount was upheld on the, on the May 4th count, in which Ms. Charles won by one vote and Mr. Bradshaw won by 18 votes. And then there was something about the Dr. Edwards lawsuit was fraudulent, and I just want to say here, here is the, here is the evidence, and then I guess people can make up their mind. The judge has denied this election contest, so that's, it might be moot, but I think that the evidence is that there were two former citizens who moved out of Leon Valley in 2018, came back to vote in the 2019 election, and um, that the home was bought in September of 2018 in Holotus. A homestead exemption on that home was recorded in April of 2019, and the income tax return was filed with the new address as well. And they also changed their driver's license to the new address. And the grandson was enrolled at the Holotus School. So uh, Dr. Edwards felt like it was something that needed to be looked into. So. Um, Regarding, and then there was a, 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 again, I can't remember all of this, but I had typed this up six weeks ago. Um, something about the ethics complaint filed by Dr. Edwards regarding using public money for advocating against the recall election and the lion's roar from Councillor Charles. There was an editorial from the San Antonio Express regarding the recall election, which purported to be the official statement of the city. And I was asked to file an affidavit because that editorial did not have um, a name on it other than, I think it was uh, Scott Huddleston, but um, this editorial was requested to be placed in the lion's roar by Councillor Alcacer, and so that needed to be the connection for his complaint, and I said I would do that. So the ethics board dismissed the cases against the city manager and Ms. Charles, and the vote against Ms. Alcacer was two to two, so it failed, and the complaint to the State Ethics Commission is still pending. Uh, my comment that the charter is ruining the city. I was only talking about the current charter, not any amendments that are on the November ballot. I've gotten really concerned about the constant removal actions against sitting council members, and I think we had a comment that somebody didn't know. Um, besides Mr. Martinez, Mr. Bradshaw has, has, has a 312, and and I have an investigation that's pending after the election. It, I guess it's going to come back. And I don't know what that's going to be. But the high cost in attorney fees, in my opinion, is not what we thought we were getting from the Home Rule Charter. And again, we've never seen anything like this in 65 years as a general law city. Uh, you know, if you have a problem with the council Mayor, member... I think this whole presentation is totally inappropriate. Well, then I'm Very responding to Ms. Old. Charles and I'm almost done. So if you have a problem with the council person, you just vote them in or I vote them out. I have a problem with it. Thank okay. you and goodbye. Okay, thank you. That was all. But again, I didn't, uh, I let Miss Charles speak. I didn't interrupt her at all. And so I just wanted that time to, um, to, to respond. So, okay. So moving on to citizens to be heard. Any citizens to be heard? Uh, yes, Mr. Blackmore. Mr. Hody, I want to say uh, I think you've done a good job as an intern council member. I think you've been completely unbiased in how you've done your job. You looked at both sides and you evaluated it. Chief, I want to say you've done an outstanding job. All thumbs up. Can't, can't be any better police chief than this town's ever seen. I appreciate your job you've done and all your people. Ms. Charles, I want to say you've done a good job since you've been on the uh, council. Point of order, Mayor. Yes. Uh, Ms. Charles and Ms. Alcacer dropped off before okay. citizens to be heard. They're no longer on the call. Okay. But he can, you can still say what you'd like. Yeah. Thank you for interrupting me, Mr. Bradshaw. I also want to answer Mr. Orozco's uh, comments about the shirt I was wearing earlier. Yeah, I knew it was offensive. But I thought it was offensive, too, when you had your team members, Mr. Bradshaw, 
Mayor Riley, out there across the street, hollering for Garrity's about our police chief. I thought that was wrong. You could hear it in this room right here. Apparently they're not here tonight. I expect I was expecting them to be here. I was going to help have them help me protest tonight across the street. Thank you, Miss Sandra, for being our city secretary. Doing a fine job. Dr. Crystal, doing a good job too. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Blackmar. I've been laughing about this one all night. I just think it's really great how the mayor finally asserted her position and how triggered that she, the, the, the establishment counselors, both of them, had to rage quit the meeting after hearing it. They just couldn't hear, like their ears were bleeding. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not licking the mayor's boots here. Trust me, I was actually, I said after that meeting, I was mad about stuff that happened before. I sent a, an email to the mayor that wasn't all that nice. And, you know, I, I'm not like a city administrator hitting recall, 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 recall email, recall. I mean, the beginning of the meeting was not good. But watching this uh, fresh, you know, without the stuff before me kind of stressing me out. I mean, this is a really great segment of the meeting. I think we have to watch it again. And, and not just the council chamber view. I actually have the view from Councilwoman Alcacer's study, you don't want to miss this. Uh, you know, if you have a Mayor, problem with the council member. Order. I think this whole presentation is totally inappropriate. Well, then I'm responding to Ms. Charles and I'm almost done. So if you have a problem with the council person, you just vote them in or I vote them out. I have a problem with it. Thank okay. you and goodbye. Uh, you know, if you have a problem with the council order, member, I think this whole presentation is totally inappropriate. Well, then I'm Very responding to Miss Charles, and I'm almost done. So, if you have a problem with the council person, you just vote them in or I vote have them a out. Problem with it. Thank okay. you and goodbye. Point of order. Wow, now that was a rage quit right there. And how as a society are we going to advance any, or even survive if we can't even listen to each other? I'm not saying we have to agree, but we have a government club that is so used to steamrolling us and getting their way, rules for us, exemptions for them, that when the truth comes out, they are so mad and so weak that they just have to leave. They can't even give us the respect of listening to all different voices. They can't have it. And I know a contested election's coming up on the national level. Please, everyone, don't get drawn into the partisan stuff. Uh, lose friends or neighbors. That is not going to help any of us. Keep an open mind. Try to relate to others. You don't have to let every disagreement tear us apart. That said, there are plenty of government employees and officials out there looking to destroy you. So make sure you always film the government. Thank you for watching and have a great day.